Welcome to the UFO Woman Show. I'm your host, Melissa Kennedy, and we are doing another at-home edition of our show. I hope all of you at home are staying safe and healthy, as my thoughts are with all of you during this difficult time. But I'm hoping that today's episode is going to inspire you and bring you some joy in, in any way that it can, because I'm bringing back one of my friends and one of my favorite guests. It's Kevin Briggs. He's an author and an experiencer, and I am I'm so happy to have you back on the show, Kevin. How are you? Hi, Melissa. I'm fine. I do Good. thank you again for inviting me on your show. I do enjoy, enjoy talking with you. We always have such a good time. So thank yes, you again we for inviting do. me. Well, you know, these uncertain times are bringing uh, a, a whole bunch of things out to the surface. I know uh, for myself, I'm working on my rose garden and, and all of my flowers have never looked any better. I mean, <laughs> I have like a wonderful clean house and my flowers are all blooming. And uh, so I'm, I'm trying to stay positive and trying to look on the bright side of things during this time. Yes, I've been uh, doing catching up again with cleaning and painting. I've painted my pool deck. I've done some repairs that needed doing to some of the walls outside that have been needed some attention for a while now. So I'm gradually catching up. So we're, we're using the time constructively. So uh, something positive out of this uh, lockdown that we're in. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know I'm uh, freshening up my cooking skills and, you know, making three uh, meals a day from scratch has been uh, wonderful for me. And uh, it's, it's actually inspired me uh, for some new projects in the future, uh, just from being, you know, in lockdown uh, for, gosh, what, five weeks? I think we're in f week five right now. Um, and it's just, uh, it's put a lot of different things into perspective for all of us, I believe. What we used to think was important kind of isn't as important now as it used to be. And uh, focusing more on, you know, improving ourselves, uh, expanding our minds, and hopefully uh, with this show, we're going to expand some minds today, Kevin. Yes, as you mentioned cooking there, my wife's been cooking, she loves cooking, and talking about expanding, my waist is expanding, I think, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yes we'll i've seen to, a lot of to. i've seen a lot of memes out there on social media where they're saying you know before lockdown after lockdown and the yeah. body has expanded <laughs> so well, a, i i can understand me, that right right well one of the projects that uh you and i have discussed and then actually is going to come into fruition here very soon you and i are working on a new book together aren't we that's correct, Jess. You asked me uh, a couple of weeks ago now if I could be a contributor to uh, one of your books, and uh, I gladly accepted that. Uh, uh, I've had, I have some ideas now. I haven't actually started writing yet, but I'm hoping to do that this week. I've been getting some ideas together and making some notes. So, yes, it will be very interesting because things, as you know, times are changing, and uh, we're under this lockdown, and we have this uh, pandemic at the moment. So, uh, um, yeah, plenty to write about. I'm sure it'll be a very interesting book and we'll be able to include things about consciousness and uh, how it's affecting uh, us globally, the, the conscious um, consciousness itself. Yes, yes. Well, the name of the new book that uh, I'm writing with Kevin and also uh, Edgar Yo, the three of us are collaborating our experiences and knowledge. And the name of that book is Tap Into Universal Energy. And uh, we're hoping to have that launch this summer. Uh, so definitely be on the lookout for that because it's going to incorporate a lot of what you and I talk about, Kevin, all the time, as well as some of my other guests that I've had on the show. Yes, it so, should be I'm, very interesting. I know Edgar has. Uh, uh, he's an experiencer as well, and uh, uh, I know I enjoy chatting with Edgar, and uh, um, yeah, it should be an amazing book. Yes, I think so. I, I can't wait. We've uh, we've already done. I think we're on chapter four already. Um, so we're we're diving into it head first. And you know what better time to to use right now in this quarantine time to work on some self improvement projects. So I'm hoping that this book is going to be one that uh, a lot of people can relate to. So speaking of books, I've got your your wonderful book here, which we've talked about several times. It's, uh, it's been on our show. It's, it's on uh, our BMK publishing uh, USA.com website, and it's the spiritual consciousness, a personal journey. And if you haven't read this book yet, guys, you really need to get a copy of this. It is such a good book. I can't put it down every time I've read it. And I've read it three times now, by the way. Um, it's so good. It, it's really a, a true um, look into Kevin's 
real life experiences um, as a remote viewer and as a uh, contactee. And uh, Kevin, you know, you, you couldn't have written this any better. For someone that maybe isn't familiar with these topics, I think you've made this uh, book so approachable and so understandable that even if you're new to the subject matter, you can relate to this book and you're not going to want to put it down. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you for that introduction of the book there. That's uh, very complimentary. I do appreciate that. Yes, uh, just my experiences from childhood. And, and many people have these experiences. Uh, they do not talk about them and... Uh, uh, for fear of ridicule, possibly. Uh, but since I've written the book, I've had many people contact me in relation to their own experiences. So uh, it's helping other people. Uh, and I'm open here to emails or contact. And uh, in fact, I had someone contact me from Brazil this week. Yes, uh, I was. I, it's oh. funny. You just read my mind. I was literally just going to ask you that question <laughs> about the guy from Brazil. Yeah, tell tell the audience about this story because you told me this on the phone the other day. Oh, did I? Okay, I forgot to tell you that. But uh, yes, uh, Flavio, his name is, and he'd watched your show, obviously in Brazil, because that's where he lives, uh, São Paulo, and he'd watched the show with uh, uh, Dr. Rebecca Hardcastle Wright, and. Uh, uh, he knows Dr. Rebecca Harkosa, right? She was in Brazil recently uh, at a conference. And uh, he was at the conference as a uh, just a, a guest. He wasn't a speaker. And uh, for some reason, the interpreter uh, wasn't able to be at the conference. So he stepped up to the plate and was the interpreter for Dr. Rebecca Harkosa's right uh, lecture. Uh, so he met her through that. And then when he saw the interview and uh, Rebecca mentioned me, he felt that he must uh, contact me. And he contacted me last week and we had a, an hour long chat and he's an experiencer as well. So again, it's connecting people globally now. Uh, so yeah, all because of your show, really. Uh, it's fascinating. Oh my goodness. Well, that certainly makes me feel good. And I'm sure it's going to make my producers feel good because that just tells me that we're making a global difference with the UFO woman show. And that's just fantastic. That, that makes all of this worthwhile. If we can just reach out and touch somebody and make a difference and make that connection. So that's so cool. Thank you for sharing that story. I, I do um, find now, I do find now that, uh, uh, uh many, uh, experiences are coming together we're all being connected. We're all joining the, the dots, like Flavio from uh, uh, Brazil. I've had other people from different parts of the U.S. here contact me. And uh, so, yeah, it's expanding our, our network, really, uh, which is very yes. good. And we can share ideas, share experiences that we've had, and that very often gives us uh, confirmation. So, uh, uh, it really yeah. does. It validates everything that we already know and have already experienced. But what I'm starting to see, as you mentioned, is the circle that we have starting um, through the guests on our show and, and other uh, ways of meeting. It is starting to make these connections that we didn't even realize we had connections with these people. <laughs> I mean, just like uh, Rebecca on my show a couple weeks ago. I had no idea until she and I talked that we grew up in the same little town in West Virginia. I mean, that's just crazy. And, uh, you know, the numerous stories that you and I talk about, Kevin, and the people that we both know, mutual friends and whatnot, there's so many similarities and so many stories that kind of intertwine in our lives that it just brings more validation. Yes, I remember when I spoke to you earlier this week, and you mentioned you were thinking about asking Derek to be on your show. And I know Derek. Derek did a channel with me a few, a couple of years ago, probably now, maybe 18 months. Uh, but again, it's how everybody's being connected. We all seem to have a connection to one another. And it's creating the... Uh, and I know one of your new authors, uh, Vale, I think her name is. She's yes. an experiencer too. And I met her at a, uh, an experiences meeting where I was showing a small video. Uh, and now she's uh, part of your published authors. I mean, it's just a very small community getting bigger and bigger and all being connected. And you seem to be the focal point for it, Melissa. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I put it out into the universe a year and a half ago that I wanted to be the publisher that uh, people came to when they had, you know, different types of stories to share and uh, the, the voice that that could get that out there for them. And, uh, you know, a year and a half later, here I am, and I, I have six uh, authors with BMK Publishing. So for that, I'm very grateful. And uh, I've been blessed to have all of these new friends come into my life and 
you know, just work mutually towards this common goal. And yes, you're right. Rail uh, Anderson. Oh my gosh. Her, her new book uh, just launched actually a couple of days ago. And uh, I'm hoping to get her on the show as well. And uh, her, her book is called a medium's journey. And oh my goodness, it's so good. It's much like your book. I just dive right into it and I can't stop reading, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, Derek, Derek, I'm hoping to have on my show either next week or the week after. So I'm looking forward to that very much. That'll be good. I, I enjoy, I always watch your shows afterwards, so I always enjoy them. And now that I'm knowing the people that have been on there, it makes it even more interesting for me. So it's fascinating. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you. And you're, you're one of my biggest supporters. You're always sharing everything on social media. And I really appreciate that because that's just getting a whole nother group of people in contact with the show, with WeBeam TV, with the books that we've got going on. And uh, thank you for that. I really appreciate that, Kevin. So, Speaking of social media, you keep sending me some videos and some articles uh, lately that's been real intriguing. You want to touch on a couple of the ones that you've uh, sent me and read yourself that you'd like to talk about? I've, I've just been doing a lot of research because, as you say, we have a lot of uh, uh, time on my hands now. And uh, uh, quite a few have been about the, uh, the pandemic, trying to get as much information as possible to help people, to assist them with the figures and things and what they can do. Uh, clearly... I think we're reaching the peak now, uh, but there seems to be two sides of the story and uh, we need to have all the information, all the figures that are correct so we can make a, a valid decision on obviously when we can come out of this at the other end. And I believe yes. that's, what, that's what's happening now. Uh, the government's uh, looking into um, um, speeding up the recovery, as it were, and opening up the small business. I saw today, I don't know which town it was in, but we opened up a small store, uh, a barber's store, and sort of things and and gradually and i'm sure each state will be different because as i'm sure we're aware new york's been the worst affected but then there are some other areas that haven't had too many uh, cases i mean one death is too many anyway but uh, they haven't had too many so their response to opening is uh, uh, can be much sooner i think and i did actually ask my guides in relation to this and uh, they said that uh, we would be getting back to normal or reopening society as it were uh, in May. And at that time, I thought that was quite soon for that. They didn't give me a specific date. But now it looks like the May might be true in some of the states. So we'll have to wait and see. Right. Well, that's interesting that your spirit guides uh, told you that. I know uh, through several meditation uh, sessions that I've done here lately, at Reiki and uh, also with the singing bowls, I've done quite a few uh, meditative sessions here lately. And one of the things that came through for me, and I really hope this, this actually happens because it would be fantastic for the humanity, but also for our planet. And that is the statistics are showing that pollution, air pollution has come way, way down. Whether you're talking about Los Angeles or the East Coast, it doesn't matter. It seems like globally air pollution is really getting reduced with the you know, least, uh, less number of uh, cars in, on the road and, and everything else. I, I know the pollution is coming way down. So I really hope that if nothing else happens, maybe we all just learn a few little tricks here from this lockdown and we actually start – to rethink how we do things in a more green way, um, you know, maybe we start putting the planet first instead of profits. That that would be pretty cool, I think. If if that happened, that'd be a good thing. Yes, I'm sure. I'm sure we will come out to the side. We'll be a changed society. Uh, but uh, I look at the positive side in relation to consciousness itself. This is the first time we've come together as a species globally. Uh, although it might be from a, a virus. But everybody's thinking about the same thing. Everybody's exactly. thinking about the planet. Everybody's sharing that consciousness. We've come together globally for the first time in our history. All the different countries, all the different ethnic people, uh, that uh, variety of human species that we have, we've all come together. We've forgotten our differences now. We're talking about the virus and how do we as a species, how does humanity get over this? And we will, and we'll do it together, and we'll learn and come out the other side. And there will be many positive things. You've already mentioned about pollution. I mean, the governments have been trying to stop the pollution by legislating things. They've had some success and some failure. Uh, but we, as the human species, have stopped using our motor vehicles, and uh, the pollution's gone down tremendously without spending any money. 
just by exactly. altering what we do, altering our behaviour. So there will be many positive things come from this, I'm sure, and uh, we need to act on those things. And obviously, we have had pandemic pandemics before, and they're, they're horrendous. Uh, but we do get through them, we do continue on. So I think this will be a great learning curve. Yes, yes. And, and uh, speaking of, to that, I've had two people um, ask me questions uh, privately on social media platforms um, that are very interesting questions. And I thought, well, what better person to talk about this than you, Kevin? <laughs> One of the questions that I had was, Melissa, do you think the intergalactics possibly have something to do with the pandemic, not in a negative way, but in a way to kind of slow this world down, get us back to basics, get us back to, you know, a, a very simple way of thinking and kind of make us more conscious about our existence and our planet? I thought that That's was an interesting question. It is very interesting. A possibility, but I actually asked that question, perhaps I should ask them that. I hadn't thought of that. I thought, I mean, we have these viruses, they're natural viruses. The coronavirus itself is very popular. Uh, it's part of the common cold, a coronavirus, not the COVID-19, obviously. Uh, but there are many uh, uh, coronaviruses and we are used to them. So I, I doubt it very much, but I haven't asked them. But uh, I could ask them, but I think that there are natural viruses that just continue to grow once they get into the human population. And we see that with many of the flus, uh, and pneumonia, um, and a lot of the uh, uh, pandemics we have had in the past, like measles, polio, all old pandemics, and we managed to overcome them and uh, almost eradicate some of them. So hopefully we'll continue to learn with this and uh, we'll get through it, as I say. I'm sure we will have a positive outcome for society in general, globally. So, uh, uh, and I said, the fact that we are coming together I think that's just absolutely fascinating. Right. Well, have you had any um, communications with the Council of Eight or, or any anything like that that you can share with us? I have. I did ask them um, about the uh, pandemic, and they said we will come out the other side, and we will come out a uh, a, a better society because of the pandemic. Uh, that was on the first occasion when I was asking them, and then the second occasion was in relation to how we've been connected through consciousness globally and raised our whole vibrational frequency. So that was interesting. And I know they're here. They're here all the time. And uh, I, I do speak to them from time to time. But they're probably just the only two things that they've asked me at the moment. So I've asked them. Uh, so we'll wait and see. I think they are waiting to see uh, what happens uh, and when we come out the other side of this pandemic. So, and then we, as I say, we still have to address the uh, engagement of our planet by the extraterrestrials. The governments are, are aware of it, uh, but they're obviously very busy with the pandemic at the moment. But once we've got over that, then uh, uh, perhaps they can turn their attention to uh, the extraterrestrial engagement of our planet. So we will have to wait and see. Right. Well, the second question that I've been asked uh, privately on social media is, and this actually came through um, uh, the UFO woman, and they asked me, did I think a fake UFO invasion is in the works in the immediate future? Um, possibility. I mean, <laughs> You know, uh, what way to stir the pot just a little bit more than uh, have some sort of a fake invasion happen? Um, I, I don't know. I have heard of that. What? Yes, I have heard of that in relation. I think that was first said by uh, Von Braun uh, many, many, many years ago. And he said uh, that at some point we will have possibly a fake alien invasion to get further control of the populace. So it's a possibility. Uh, I know nothing about it. I haven't asked my guys about it. They haven't said anything in relation to that. I think it's probably one future option, uh, but we uh, I don't think the futures are set in, in stone, as it were, and we can influence them by consciousness. Uh, because we have done that, uh, the path has probably changed. So I have no evidence that there will be a fake invasion, uh, but then I'm just, you know, Kevin who lives in Florida and... Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> right. No, I, I agree. And, it, but, you know, when I get asked these questions, um, I you know, I I always have a positive answer to as many things as I possibly can. And my answer to that is um, if it were a true invasion, it would have happened already. So I my position always is that the intergalactics uh, or the extraterrestrials that are in the in our presence do not have uh, violent tendencies, if you want to think of it that way, because if they did, we would already be gone anyway. So I tend to okay, look so at it as a peaceful interaction. And if there was a non-peaceful event happen, I myself am going to put up a red flag that, um, is this really the, the real deal or is this something else that is, you know, with well, I bad think the, intentions? The scenario, <laughs> I think the scenario of the false flag has been put out there throughout the whole um, UFO, um, what shall we call it? establishment as it were so everybody is aware of it so yeah we would all question it uh, and i am aware that uh, uh, many experiences experiences have had a dream a shared dream where they see craft appearing over major cities globally uh, mm -hmm. at the same time uh, but that wasn't an invasion that's obviously they've been invited in that dream and i know that dreams are a modality of contact and uh, as you say, there's no reason for them to be hostile. Uh, even our governments have known they've been here for 70 odd years, and I'm sure right. much, many, many years before that. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that there's no threat from them. They've told me they will only intervene if we start a nuclear war. And exactly. they've already demonst demonstrated to our governments that they can uh, disable the nuclear weapons. They've already demonstrated that they can start the launch sequence and stop them when they want. And the governments know this. So so they are no threat. I know that. They've told me that. And uh, I'll say they'll only step in if we start a nuclear war. But they have put out an invitation there. They would like to meet with our ambassadors. I'm sure they're very busy at the moment, but uh, it will still be on the agenda, I'm sure. And we'll see. We'll continue working towards that and see where it takes us. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, my, my take on that, for those of you that are working at home, there's nothing to fear because I, I really believe that if there were, we'd already know it. Uh, I have a very peaceful uh, mindset when it comes to intergalactic or interdimensional beings. I'm not scared of it whatsoever. Um, I believe that they are here for our greater good. It is not something to be scared of. Um, it is something, however, that could be misunderstood or misinterpreted. Um, and for that reason, I, I urge everybody to you know, look at books such as Kevin's, um, other books that are out there that are fantastic. Dr. Stephen Greer's fantastic. There's a lot of resources out there that once you get the education, once you get the knowledge, and you truly understand what this whole cosmos is about and the uh, universal consciousness, you're not going to be scared anymore because you're going to have the knowledge to where you're not fearful of the unknown. I, and I think that's probably what, you know, things like Hollywood and propaganda and all this stuff, they just stir the pot of fear mongling. And then, then everybody's like, ah, you know, aliens. It's not like that. <laughs> it's no, that's, just not. That's if, quite true. if it and were, we'd already know it. Yeah, that's quite interesting what you said there. And when you actually said initially, I'm not fearful, the first time you said that, the time was 33, 33 seconds. So of course that it was. To me, <laughs> on, the, on the clock here, with the, I can see it said yeah. 33, 33. And that means to me that's a safety number in relation from the ETs. And that's part of the sometimes the way they communicate with numerology or numbers. I know when I was wow. speaking to Flavia from uh, um, uh, Brazil, on the first time I tried to contact him, my uh, I lost my internet connection. So I was I messaged him and told him about that. And then uh, the following day, I was able to get the internet connection working again. And I contacted him. We spoke for about an hour or so. And then when we finished speaking, I uh, um, signed off. And the time was 11.11. .11. And then I checked the time the day before when I told him that I couldn't do it. I'll do it because my internet was down. And the time there was 11.11. .11. And these are the wow. numbers that... They communicate, and again, 
it, when you go back to this and have a look at the time, uh, when you say that, it was 33, 33. So oh, my again, goodness. Well, I wasn't even really... looking at the clock because I'm looking at the camera. So I, I didn't even see the right, time. Okay. But you know what? I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well, it just it just caught my attention. As you said, I am not fearful. And it went 3333. Three, three, three. So you'll be able to replay it, I'm sure, with the clock and see oh, that. Oh, wow. I look out for these these numbers now. They turn up all the time. And uh, I have a friend in... Uh, in uh, uh, which is now Vermont, Vermont, and she phoned me uh, several times, and each time she phoned me, uh, the same number came up, and this uh, at the same time, and uh, it was twelve fifty seven, and uh, every time she phoned me, it was twelve fifty seven, and I pointed it out to her because it was a cute, she's an experiencer because it's communication between two experiences. There's no way you can bring somebody five or six times and it just happens to be 1257. Exactly. Yeah. You can't make that up. I mean, that's not coincidence. That's synchronicity for sure. Yeah. And uh, the, to follow that up a little bit further, I think, you know, that I was a police officer in England before I retired and my collar number was one, two, five, seven. So again, mm. with that, some synchronicity. <laughs> Oh, uh, they just gave me goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, Melissa. <laughs> no, you can't make this stuff up, Kevin. I mean, you, you mentioned 1111. I cannot begin to tell you how many times 111 or 1111 shows up on my clock when I look. Or, uh, for example, um, I mean, just... For example, the book that we're the new book that we're working on, I didn't realize, but I had uh, the font uh, do like an auto uh, size font. Guess what it was? Eleven point eleven. Was it really? Yeah, yeah. So it, yeah, because I scaled I it. <laughs> once you're open to it, then you recognize it, and then that's part of the universe, uh, universal consciousness communicating with us, giving us confirmation, really, that we're on exactly. the right track. Oh, yeah. Yes, eleven eleven. For those of you that don't know, that that's a very uh, strong indicator that you are awakened to the universe's energy. There's uh, it's angelic. There's a whole bunch of stuff. If you just uh, Google it or look it up, there's a lot of stuff about numerology and the eleven eleven number is quite powerful. So I encourage people to look that up because it's really neat. But um, well, anyway, what what else has been going on, Kevin? Tell me some more. I know you've you've had some phone calls. You've been on some uh, Zoom and and Skype meetings yes, yourself. I went, I, Anything I that you can a, share? I went. Yes, I went to a. Uh, uh, I was invited to a MUFON meeting. Uh, we not, normally have them in uh, once a month down in Orlando, and uh, if I can get down there, I go. But uh, this time they decided to do it by Zoom, and. Uh, and then again, another guest of yours, Denise Stoner. She was organizing the MUFON meeting. She sent me an email, asked me if I was interested in attending, and I attended. And there were 20 of us. Uh, we had a, a fascinating talk by one of the uh, uh, guests there, Tom, uh, about a book called Rachel's Eyes. I hadn't heard about this book, and uh, very interesting how she was at university for a short period of time with an actual hybrid. Um, so it's probably on my list now to get to buy that book, Rachel's Eyes. But uh, but it worked very well. The uh, meeting went down very well. We all communicated. We were able to, uh, if you had a question, ask questions. So that will probably be the way it's done uh, uh, in the future, possibly. And it saved me time because normally I drive over to Orlando and then we have the meeting and then uh, I drive all the way back. But I just miss probably the personal interaction that we normally have. But uh, Right. Yes, I've had some other, uh, I'm using Zoom all the time now because obviously we can't get out. And uh, I've had a couple of meetings with other experiences uh, across the US. And that's that's always interesting. We all get confirmation. And uh, so, yeah, I keep him quite busy. And now I'm writing this chapter for your book. So, yeah, it's um, I'm keeping busy. I'm keeping busy. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, you mentioned the uh, the book that you discussed during the, the MUFON virtual meeting, um, a hybrid, meaning a human and extraterrestrial hybrid? Yes, on this one, I think they said that she was a uh, reptilian or reptoid. And, oh. Uh, yeah, so you'll have to get the book and read it. I know uh, yes. Tom, Tom gave us a, a quick synopsis of the book, and it sounded very exciting. So I won't go into oh, it because yeah. uh, 
but certainly uh, uh, worth a read from what the information we were given. So, uh, do you I, I know? Do did not... did, uh, did the person have Rh negative blood, or did they even discuss that at all? I don't. I don't think he discussed that. I don't know. No. So uh, it was okay. just a. It was a, a lady that was at university, and she was asking for someone to share uh, the dorm with her or her rooms or whatever. And this lady was was blind, and uh, and then they uh, uh, someone answered the advertisement for a roommate, and this lady turned up who was a hybrid, and because the uh, lady was blind, she wasn't able to see her. Uh, so I won't go into any deep, it would spoil the book, but uh, a fascinating story. And again, another connection there. We were talking about it, and Denise Stoner knew the author and the person in the book. Oh, and, uh, my which was, gosh. Which was fascinating. And she said she, she would be 93 years old now. Uh, so, uh, But she spoke to her 10 years ago um, about the book and... Uh, uh, got some more information. So again, a, a circle of things going around, everybody being connected, you know. So if any of your uh, viewers out there are interested in that book, uh, I forget who the publisher is now, but uh, Rachel's Eyes is two, volume one and volume two. So, And she didn't write volume two until she was 80. And she felt oh, that gosh. She, had to, she had to finish the story off because of her age. She was 80. She didn't know how much longer she was going to live. Uh, but she's now 93, so she's still, I think she's still going strong. Don't quote me on that. But, uh, um, yes, yeah, so uh, very interesting to me. I'm going to buy the book anyway and read it. So, Oh, absolutely. It sounds like something I'd be interested in. And you know me, the RH negative theorist in me is like, ah, I got to find out is this person RH negative? Because, you know, about 85 to 90 percent of us that have that blood type uh, are experiencers. And uh, there, there's so much fascinating data out there and, and some of which is not published. It's more um, people like myself that uh, dive into the different theories and, and do, you know, surveys and questions and stuff, you know, questionnaires with people that are RH negative. And um, I, you know, one of these days I'm going to write a book about RH negative um, because I think there's something to all that really and truly. Yeah. It's interesting. You should say that. I got a link today from Dean Caparella and they organized the Aliens Revealed online summit uh, last right, year. Right, that we, yeah, we were both in, in that. That was in uh, oh, January yes, yes, or February, we were, yes. remember? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, he, uh, uh, on this uh, link that he sent, he was talking about the RH negative blood. There was a discussion about it. I haven't watched it yet, so I've got the link. I'm going to watch it. So I don't know if they sent you the link or not. but uh, Probably uh, I haven't checked my, it was a Facebook uh, no, just direct email from Dean. So. Uh, oh, okay, um, okay. Well, yeah. I haven't checked my email, so I'll <laughs> have to check after we get done with filming today. But uh, yeah, that definitely sounds interesting. And uh, from time to time, I'll get just random people, um, you know, email me or message me on social media uh, that are RH negative, and they're like, "So, Melissa, what's your thoughts on this?" Or you know, they'll share their personal experiences or characteristics and traits with me, and. Man, I tell you what, there's just so many things that people maybe would miss. But when you start to study this stuff like I do and make these dots, it, there's a lot of uh, real anomalies here that uh, I don't think traditional science can explain some of it. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, but, I think that's um, the case very often if you get the time to do your own research. And there's plenty out there. You've just got to get all the research, pull it all together, and then the dots team seem to join together and give you a whole picture. We just, yeah. as, a, as an individual, unless you particularly do that, you just get a little bit here, a little bit there, and you don't get the full picture. So perhaps now with the lockdown, we'll have time to do more research. And all my <laughs> brother's yes. been busy doing, been doing research on uh, uh, all sorts of things now, and he's, uh, he seems to be keeping quite busy. Um, right. Well, one of these days we got to find out if you're RH negative, Kevin, because I tend to think you are. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I did. Uh, I had uh, uh, some blood taken no, quite a few years ago now, and uh, they did tell me, but I forgot what it was. So, but she said it was a uh, an unusual uh, blood, and uh, it was only it was actually for myself. I was having an operation, so they took a couple of pints out, and then if I needed it in the operation, they put it back in again. But I didn't need it, so I was okay. But yeah. But I don't have oh any record goodness. of what it was. So it might be interesting to see. Yeah. 
Yes, it really would be. I mean, if nothing else, just for my own curiosity and my own research, I think it would be, uh, well, I, I don't think I would be surprised if you're RH negative, Kevin. Wouldn't so, surprise so me a what, bit. What's the connection then to the RH negative to the ETs? It's not an well, area that I've studied, so... Right. Well, there, there's quite a few connections um, that, that someone could, could certainly theorize. Um, that is that the increased psychic abilities, increased intuition, heightened uh, enlightenment, uh, connection to the cosmos. I mean, all of this plays right into what, what you are, really, Kevin. Um, I but then, that does describe me. <laughs> yeah, I know it does. That's why I'm like, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Uh, a lot of times you're, you're clairvoyant, uh, clairaudient, both of which you and I are. Um, I don't know. There, that's just the part of it. But I mean, that's to me, that's a lot of stuff that describes you. So <laughs> I yeah, wouldn't I be surprised. Does, yes, I do have those abilities, but I think probably we all have those abilities. We just don't develop them. We're not told true. about them. And well, true. Hidden, you know. I don't think my abilities are anything special. Uh, the only difference is someone showed me how to use them. And it doesn't matter whether it's a, a human that shows you how to use them or a higher conscious being or an ET. But if you're taken and shown things and you learn and you learn those abilities. I know that uh, I've had some friends and things and uh, that uh, they've had twins and the twins speak to one another telepathically. And then as mm -hmm. they get older, they don't use it anymore because they just use speech. Uh, but we have these abilities and uh, we lose them. And uh, uh, with myself, I kept the ability going because I was using it to communicate with the ETs. And they encouraged it and they guided me and taught me. But what I did find interesting the other day when I was speaking to a group of uh, experiences, that how uh, many of them have... Uh, uh, telepathic abilities and we talked mm -hmm. about it as if it's normal many many years ago you couldn't speak about that you would oh gosh no they would think you were crazy <laughs> yeah right and i i actually gave an example of one of my uh, lessons in telepathic communication and it was quite interesting because uh, 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 i've been doing it for many many years and quite used to it uh, and on this one occasion i was sat uh, about 10 o'clock in the evening and i got this thought have I put my chickens in the chicken coop? Now, uh, we live out in the country here, so I have to lock the chickens away at night so the coyotes don't come. We have coyotes here, and they, they'll come and steal the chickens. And so I have to go and lock them in. So I went outside thinking, oh, I couldn't remember whether I'd locked them in or not. So I got up to check. As I walked out the back door, the street light went off immediately. Again, nothing unusual for me. And, uh, and then I walked through the gates towards the chickens, and I had locked them. It was closed. I, had, I just didn't remember. And then I looked up at the other street light directly behind the chicken coop, and that went off. And I thought, oh, I wonder if there's a craft in the area. So then I looked up, and there was this craft. It was lit up like a Christmas tree. It wasn't very high. It was moving silently, uh, slowly. It flashed a big red neon light and a white neon light, and it flew directly over my head and disappeared slowly. Now, what that was, that was a lesson there in relation to communication using telepathic communication. My understanding was that was my thought that have I locked the chickens in, but it wasn't. It was their thought. They gave that thought to me, so I would get up. They then attracted my attention with a streetlight, with a second streetlight, and then I look up and see the craft. So really what they're saying, they can share their thoughts with us. And when you understand that, it increases your understanding of telepathic communication. So, um, And it depends Absolutely. where you are on that level of, of your understanding. But I've met with quite a few experiences now who have the telepathic abilities that I have with the ETs. And it's not just with the ETs, I think. Very often through my life, I think, oh, I'll just phone my brother. And then as I do that, the phone rings and it's my brother. <laughs> you know, yes. And that's happened so many times. And you speak to people uh, about that and they say, oh, that happens all the time with my sister or my brother. And They're on connected. many occasions, I've yeah. phoned my brother and he's engaged because he's phoning me. You know, so it's that, oh my gosh. That's telepathic communication. But we don't tend to think of it as, as that until we learn and develop it further. So, yeah. Uh, right. Well, that, and that's an excellent point. I mean, you're, you're exactly right. It's, uh, this is not indicative just to one group of people, as we all have this capability. I just think that 
for those of us that maybe are more awakened uh, and more alert uh, into our abilities and into the cosmos and the, and the universal energies, uh, when you tap into all of that, you are more awakened and you actually experience a lot more of these, you know, synchronicities or telepathic experiences, uh, psychic uh, sessions, things like that. We're all more in tune with it because it's what we do. Um, yeah. and, and anybody can do it. I mean, you know, I've had people ask me, well, Melissa, how do I, you know, how do I see things like you do? Well, you know, I've been working on this for a solid two years. And, and I, when I say working on it, I mean, every single day, I take several hours out of my day to raise my vibrational levels uh, through a, a whole host of modalities. It's not just any one thing that I do, but it's, it's a family of a lot of things that I do together uh, to bring you know, myself up to a higher vibrational frequency. And, you know, some of that is, is through food that I eat and things that I avoid. Um, that that's a big part of it, but things like, uh, you know, Tai Chi, Qigong, meditation, yoga. I mean, I, you know, I'm a water sign, so I make sure that I always have a water element in my daily life. Uh, hence my pool. <laughs> For those of you that follow me on social media, I'm yes, always picturing. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm always I'm always yeah. showing my pool because that for me is relaxation. It, it's very meditative. Um, I now have a 60 pound uh, selenite crystal by my pool, and I sit and meditate with it. Um, I do a lot of psychic journeys with it. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I do you know, with crystals, I'm a huge, huge, uh, fan of working with crystals. Um, so it is just a lot of things and, and, but yes, you're right. Anybody can do this. If, if you wanted to, if you choose to, there's a lot of information out there. Uh, I have channeled, oh my gosh, three, maybe four projects for me to do, uh, here in the last few weeks, all of which, deal with raising our vibration, getting ourselves connected to the universal consciousness. And it's the reason why you and I are working on another book together. And, you know, it's just uh, getting this information out there. For me, it's just, I'm a vehicle to educate and get the information out there. Uh, it's nothing special that, you know, I know or any special gifts or anything. It's just, I'm actively pursuing this lifestyle and hopefully I will encourage and inspire others uh, to follow suit and um, get out of the lower vibrational frequency and raise ourselves up. And then I think if, if uh, enough of us do it, like we were talking about uh, collective consciousness, global consciousness right now, especially right now during this lockdown, just imagine if millions of people all at the same time meditated, did yoga, um, I don't know, any, any other positive activity that we can think of. If we all did it at the same time, the whole entire earth would just vibrate much higher at that, at that moment. And I think we did a little bit of that through the uh, worldwide meditation uh, on April 4th. I know myself and Edgar, we both uh, participated in that and we did a whole entire hour of meditation and we had, Oh, collectively, we probably had close to a hundred pounds of crystals around us. Right, okay. <laughs> That's yeah, amazing, so, isn't it, Billy, what you can do with these crystals. And I think, as you say, meditation is the key and ha having an open mind and uh, asking. Uh, you know, you can ask higher consciousness, ask the uh, ETs, higher conscious beings, the angelic realm, uh, whatever your belief system is. Uh, and they will assist, they will help, uh, as I'm sure. I'm, I've done that from a child and uh, I'm very confident and uh, if ever I need any help in anything, I always ask, and uh, they do help. They do. It's amazing, really. It's, uh, well, and I think that's what's so so neat about your story, Kevin, is that you you've been aware of this since a child childhood, and you know a lot of us weren't really awake, so to speak, at at that time of our lives. I mean, maybe we experienced things, but we didn't maybe understand it like you did. I mean, I know I had some experiences as a kid, but I, I never. <laughs> I never actively uh, pursued it until I became an adult and, and learned a lot more. But my gosh, you've been doing this since the age of what, three, four? How old were you? Well, th three was my first uh, recollection of being conscious again and conscious in another physical body. And uh, uh, that was my first understanding of consciousness this time around, as it were. Uh, but 
uh, I think eight was the next time I had contact with Alton D when they materialized in my uh, bathroom. Uh, I think I mentioned that on your last show, frightened me to death, but uh, that was the beginning of a lifelong contact with them. And uh, they helped me, they guided me, but I asked them questions. And uh, I always thought it was just normal. We were all like this. We all had these extra abilities, but people didn't speak out about them. And it wasn't until I got to about 17, 18, and I thought, well, nobody talks about this. Nobody talks about out-of-body travel. Nobody talks about the guides that are helping us. And the or they, they did when I went to church, you know, because there were angels that, that helped you, or your deceased family members were there, and they were helping you. Uh, but nothing about the ETs or the higher conscious beings, as it were. And uh, But I thought it was just normal. So then I started asking at 17, 18, and asking in a third party. You know, I've got a friend of mine who says he travels outside his body. I've got a friend of mine who communicates with higher conscious beings. Do any of you do that? And they always used to reply, oh, your friend must be not delusional. Which I don't think we use words like delusional then, but... Uh, um, yeah, not normal, shall we say. So so I was unable to find anybody. So what I did, I just accepted it, embraced it, and then asked for more information because it was working for me. And uh, and as I said again, I think on your last show, uh, if Art and D had not come and materialized in my bedroom at, uh, three years ago probably now and asked me to write about the book and talk about my experiences, I wouldn't have. I'd have just gone to my grave and, and taken the information with me. Um, but now I'm speaking out about it and people are interested, the book's selling well, um, and people are contacting me, and I'm, I'm helping people as well. So it, it's fascinating, really. I was hoping to be winding down at this time of life, but I'm seeing to be getting busier and busier, but that's a good thing. Keeps the mind yeah. Oh, it is a good thing. Anytime you can be in demand, Kevin, that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they can't get enough of you. They love you. And, you know, your story, your personality, you're so down to earth. I mean, so much of, I think, the stigma of what all of this has put into our minds of what somebody that maybe is an experiencer or somebody that, you know, studies UFOs or extraterrestrials or the cosmos. For some reason, we've got this ugly stigma that they're crazy people. Well, you know what? I'm here to tell you guys, I'm not crazy. I know Kevin's not crazy. And all the other people I've had on my show, these are sound, solid people with amazing educational backgrounds, experiences, work experiences, everyday people um, that, you know, have the courage to come out and talk about this and, you know, yeah. lift this veil yeah. off of this cover up and let's get out and talk about it. Yes, that's the beauty of it, I think, because I'm confident in talking about it. And, of course, there, there'll be naysayers and people who say that you're delusional and things like that, or you've got mental health problems or whatever. Uh, but I'm confident in my uh, uh, abilities. I'm confident in my life, as it were. And uh, I did ask my guides when I, I, they asked me to talk about it. I said, well, what will happen if people, the people won't believe me? And they said, Kevin, it doesn't matter whether people believe you or not. The important thing is to tell your story. And, and I've found by telling the story, it helps other people. And now I'm in contact with other experiences. When I was looking at 17, 18, 19 or whatever, trying to find other people and I couldn't, now I'm 66, they're all coming out of the woodwork. And they're all everywhere. <laughs> they're everywhere. They're <laughs> everywhere. And then some of, a lady I spoke to the other day, she's had contact since she was two. I've had contact with people who have uh, had their own contact from four years old, six years old, eight years old as myself, 10 years old. I've met one person who had contact while he was still. Oh, wow. Still in the first home. I mean, that's just amazing, really. But the, so then you've got the uh, the very earliest that I've come into contact with. And all these people, uh, say, uh, are very sound people, I'd say. They're all very well educated. And um, they've all got these abilities that uh, we, and we all share. And so yes. it's just uh, amazing, really, to be able to share the information and put it out there, really. Well, I, I think as people become more and more uh, used to hearing these stories from everyday people, it becomes less fearful. I mean, let, let's be honest. When you um, criticize or judge or, you know, dismiss uh, somebody's story as crazy, it's usually because you are fearful or you're unknowledgeable of what they're talking about. 
And that, that's just a knee-jerk uh, reaction that humans have when they don't understand something. Well, if you don't understand it, we're just going to belittle it and we're going to you know, knock it down and call it a, an ugly name. But when you really start to get educated on this and you really open your mind and you see the bigger picture, not what we've been taught in school or not what the media tells us in general. I mean, you really start to research and you really start to read about this subject matter. It's not crazy. Uh, yes, it's not crazy. Would, it's just not what we're used to. No, I would agree entirely. And there's so much more to learn. And we're all great healers as well. And I've met many experiences who have developed their healing abilities so far that they can help heal other people. And yes. I know I keep Yeah, Reiki and therapeutic yes, touch. Yes, there are many. Um, I'm not an expert on any of those, but I understand that uh, uh, they are valid, legitimate areas where we are able to heal ourselves and yes others. And, well that's exactly in fact we're, we're going to touch on that in in the new book that's happened to uh universal uh energy the new book that you and i are working on edgar and i are going to talk about uh reiki therapeutic touch because he and i are both certified in reiki and so we talk oh, okay. about that and uh and how we can raise our vibrational levels uh to the higher consciousness to the universal consciousness and tap into those healing abilities and then of course your experience kevin with remote viewing you know a lot of people have possibly heard of remote viewing uh, as a government program that we use to spy on you know our enemies and and whatnot um they may be familiar with remote viewing from that aspect but certainly you weren't a spy <laughs> <laughs> uh, for any any government or anything, but um, you, you know, this is just from your own personal experience with remote viewing. Yes, I use if you call it remote viewing, or I call it out of body experiences, where I separate the consciousness from the physical and able to go and travel out of body. I leave my body behind because it's obviously uh, encumbrant when you want to travel further distances just using consciousness itself. Uh, so I've done that all my life, and again as a child. I thought that was normal, and uh, it wasn't until I got older that... Uh, but now I've met other people with the same ability. And uh, uh, and now I've learned about remote viewing and things like that, which anybody can learn to do. And it's very similar is remote viewing um, to out-of-body travel. So it is an ability, again, that we have. And you're correct, the governments did use it in the Cold War, I think, or spying on one another. And I'm sure they still use it to this day. Uh, but, yeah, so they know it's a reality. And it really, it's just using uh, consciousness itself. I saw a brief video a couple of days ago where they, they can now measure, uh, uh, I know they uh, can measure the electrical activity within your brain by putting electrodes on. But this was having electrodes outside of the skull about uh, two or three inches, and they could measure consciousness outside of the brain. And that's the first time they've done that. So that's showing us then that the consciousness is around us. And then if you can tap into it, then you can use it for communication. You can use it for travel. You can use it for creation, manifestation. So it's a, um, a very bright future we have. And we're, we're moving up that, uh, that scale there. So um, looking forward to the future, Melissa. Yes, yes, me too. And, and you know, as I, I get more and more in tune uh, with the universe's energy and healing energy, I'm more spiritual now than I have ever been in my entire life. I am here to tell you, I am way more spiritual being than I ever was. I'm also way more in tune with nature, uh, with just things that raise our vibration, things that make us feel good, things that make us do good um, than I've ever been. So there, there's definitely something to this. And if you haven't looked into it uh, and you're watching the show, I, I highly recommend you know, going back, re-watching or watching for the first time uh, a lot of these episodes of The UFO Woman because we've had so many good guests on here. Yes, we talk about extraterrestrials. Yes, we talk about UFOs. But really and truly, we talk about the whole universe because that's what this is all about. It's not just one facet. It's the whole universe as a whole. Uh, and tapping into that. Uh, on a personal level and an intellectual level and a spiritual level. That's what all of this is about. And that's really what's important, especially during this time, this uncertain time. I think it's important that uh, we not only look within, but we look out to the universe to help us through this difficult time, because that's the only way I think we're going to make it. Yes, I would agree. And I think that people are being awakened now 
Uh, as you said, there was that mass meditation on April the 4th. Uh, there are other groups, large groups globally again, getting together, meditating, requesting uh, the, the assistance of consciousness itself, shall we say. Uh, yes. So, yes, um, um, we've so much to learn. And you already understand healing because you're a, a, a Reiki. I don't know what, what title do you have as a Reiki? Is it a Reiki master or? Yeah, uh, it no. is. It is. Yeah, you okay. go through the different levels of, of Reiki, Reiki 1, Reiki 2, Reiki 3. Okay. And then once so, you hit that third, right? So you yeah, already it's, know it's, about it's healing. I mean, yeah, you already know about healing and the healing yes. abilities. I've always just healed myself if I get something wrong. I for, <laughs> oh, I, I do for... that too. Oh, yeah, I do that too. I, I uh, oh my gosh, I, I got into Reiki way back in my twenties, so I, I've been right. uh, doing Reiki for over twenty five years. So, um, it, it's a good thing. And if you don't know about it, and, and uh, you're listening to us, and you want to check into it, I highly recommend you do that as well. Because again, this is full circle. All of this is interrelated. Intergalactics, UFOs cosmos universal energy it's all interconnected well kevin it looks to me like we're uh getting down to the final seconds here and as always i love having you on my show you are such a joy go to his website kevinjbriggs.com check out his book his book is amazing spiritual consciousness a personal journey and you guys got to look out for the new book that kevin and i are doing along with edgar yo and that is tap into the universal energy it really is going to answer a lot more questions um, but until then i really appreciate all of you from my home to yours i hope that you all stay safe Stay healthy, and as always, keep looking up. Hi, Melissa. Hey, Kevin. Good Hi. job, my friend. That went okay, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy talking to you. You know that. Yeah, so. no, yes, it went very well. So uh, uh, I didn't know what we were going to cover today, but uh, uh, yeah, it went very well. So. That's good. So I'm looking forward to it when you speak with Derek. That'll be interesting. I'll be looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah, I touched base with him yesterday. And, and oh, I think did. he's okay. going to try to... Yeah, I think he's going to try to be on next week's show. So I'm going to confirm that up with him and, and try to make that happen. So. Yeah, he's an amazing guy, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he is. Well, Kevin, I am going to talk to you soon, my friend. we got okay, we got much then. work to do on our book. <laughs> Okay, well, I'll get on with it now and uh, uh, hopefully get it done. So, okay, okay thanks, John. Super. Appreciate Thank that. you so much. What? Okay, bye. You bye, too. John. Bye. bye, John. Bye. I'm doing. I'm gonna go do it right now. I promise. I'm gonna go right now. Okay, bye, guys.